This is my orc boy. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Orcs are one of the most harrowing armies to paint in all 40k, but they are also objectively the best. They are never beaten, they are our superior fungus sons who shall inherit the earth. Today I'm going to show you how to paint an orc, and hopefully give you some advice that will make the process of painting your 100 plus little green sons easier. Some basic pre-painting stuff to go over. Take a few seconds to scrape any mold lines on the model off with an X-Acto knife. If you're new to Warhammer, mold lines are the thin little lines that you can see that usually divide the model in half. Don't be too precious with this stuff, it doesn't have to be perfect, just try to get most of them. The 40k orc boys have these weird buckles that go in the pants too. I didn't do this for my orcs, but if I were to paint a new army, I would just shave them all off with the Dremel. I don't really feel like it adds that much to the model. Painting all those buckles is really fucking annoying. First step is to prime the model with black spray primer. I like Tamiya and Vallejo's prime primers the most, but you can use whatever works best for you. The next step is to apply something called xenophylating to the model. Basically what you do is you take a bright color. In this case, I'm using Arid Earth by Army Painter through an airbrush. To add some lighting variation, it makes contrast paints look a little bit better than if you were to supply them over a pure bright coat of something. And it creates a guide for where you should place your highlights for later. I'm going to be using contrast paints today. But placing one of the GW glaze paints over this, or a very thin, slightly watered down coat of a brighter base paint, you'll still get that same cool, easy highlight look. If you don't own an airbrush, using a spray can is actually probably a lot better for the purposes of painting a horde army. To save you a ton of time, I used Orc Flesh Contrast Paint to base coat the skin. For most of the orcs in this video, I actually used Ogre Camo, followed by a shade of Way Watcher Green in all the crevices. But if you're starting a new orc army, I recommend using Contrast Paints. It's a lot faster than base coating a model than outlining all the individual cracks of the glaze or shade later. And also, I like the way they smell. I'm trying to be neat here, I don't like painting neat, but it will, ultimately, make the painting process as a whole go much faster. If you mess up a little bit, don't worry about it too much though. Like the mold lines doesn't have to be perfect, because above all else here, we want our boys first. I've literally painted all 300 to work boys I own, so I actually ran out of models to paint for the video. All I have left here is Warhammer Fantasy Orcs. These boys got cute little tunics and some pants. But all the principles applied here can obviously translate to a 40k orc too. I painted the tunic with snake bite leather contrast paint. If this was a 40k orc, I would paint the pants a different color from the shirt. I feel like it helps establish a little bit of contrast between the two articles of clothing. Most of my orcs have different colors pants to distinguish squads. If you're playing a game with like a hundred models or more, it's a huge favor to both you and your opponent. It gets pretty easy to lose track of exactly who's in what squad. You don't have to veer too far away from your army's main color scheme. For example, if you're playing Evil Suns and you want all of them to be identifiably Evil Suns, you can go with like a medium red for one, bright red for another, and then a dark red for the third squad, or like an orange or something. Looking at this boy reminded me of a couple of other aspects of the 40k boy kit that can be kind of annoying. He's got this little strap on his left bicep. If you're trying to paint an army quickly, I would avoid bits like that. The more large, blocky surfaces there are to paint, the better. You don't want too many areas of minute sculpted detail. The sim goes for the overall straps that some of the boys have. On my first pass painting, I'll usually ignore those and then wait till later if I decide that I want to put more work into the squad and have them look a little better. In the assembly process, I usually just try to ignore any bits that have weird areas that I feel like are going to slow me down later on. I also use snake bite leather to base cut the teeth at this time. Base cut all the metal areas with a 2 to 1 one mix of a batted black and water. This will help the metallics look better. While I was waiting for that to dry, I went over all the other leather areas with Gore Grunt of Fur. I don't like using too many different colors for all the accessories, but having a secondary color adds a lot. Using a clan color could have worked too, but I wanted this work to feel like everything he's wearing is made out of leather or found any fancy dyes. After waiting for all the black areas to dry, I dry brushed them with Iron Breaker. The chainmail area was still a little wet when I dry brushed it, which you normally want to avoid, but if you're painting your models in batches, then this probably wouldn't happen. I typically paint five orcs at the same time, sometimes ten if I'm feeling bold or I'm really trying to get them done in time for a tournament, but I find it's a lot more rewarding than painting them individually, and it saves time not having to clean your brush off quite as much. If you haven't painted too many large squads, I would start with five, then work your way to ten once you've done a full unit of thirty. Another good thing about batch painting is, especially with contrast paints, eliminates the time that you normally spend just waiting for layers to dry. You're always moving on to the next one. I used Runefen Silver to create some highlights on the metal areas using a medium layer brush. Quickly outlining all the metal areas with it is a nice way to make a little bit of like a chip look. I also quickly painted on some reflections of the blades. Literally just draw a couple big flat lines and you're good to go. I also painted the tongue with Blood Angels right here. Doing it now will give it some time to dry before I move on to the teeth. I painted all the jewelry with a mix of brass squirt being in bright gold by Army Painter. And I painted all the teeth and his nails with Arid Earth by Army Painter. Teeth and any like weird jewelry 
rivets or bullets and accessories are the smallest parts of an orc model I consistently paint. Most of mine have their eyes painted, but if you're just trying to paint a ton of boys to use for a tournament, I wouldn't worry about it. The teeth and small metallic areas for sure are important to pick out though. It's pretty distracting when they're not painted. After that, I put some texture paint on the base. This particular one is a Grawl and Badland, and arguably, more importantly, painted the rim of the base a solid color. You can paint the rims of your base any color you want, but it's gotta be a solid color. Unpainted base rims are a huge pet peeve of mine. Models never feel finished to me until the base rims are painted. Important note on texture paint, if you're planning on using these bottles a lot, packing them up and flying around the country, I would definitely paint a second coat of paint on top of it. The paint will flake off over time if you're not careful with it. If you paint a really thick base coat on top of it though, you should be fine. Or water down Mod Podge or PVA glue. You could call your boy finish here if you wanted to. This took me probably between 15 and 20 minutes total. I bet I could get it down to 10 if I was batch painting them and practice this color scheme a few times. Definitely looks basic, but if you're on your way to LVO and you're painting in the backseat of your friend's car because you still have 60 Slugger Boys to paint before the tournament tomorrow, haven't slept in 24 hours, and have only been eating mozzarella string cheese because you didn't go to get groceries this week and it's the only thing you have left, you should probably sleep and reevaluate your relationship to Warhammer. But if you're like me and that's what you decide not to do, paint your works to the standard of quality instead and call them done. Revisit them and add highlights at a time in your life when your diet consists of more than dairy. I like work skin to be really bright. I like when they feel kind of colorful and cartoonish. So if I go beyond base coat wash or just contrast, one of the first things I start to do is highlight the skin. The majority of the orc is skin. It's one of the first things you notice from a tabletop level far away, and it's by far the majority of the surface area of the model. This orc skin was highlighted with moot green. If you want to do a less saturated look, ochre and camo is really good. If you decide you want to highlight your orc skin and go for something fancy, instead of doing zenith highlights and painting contrast on top, I would prime the model with a dark green spray primer and go straight into painting highlights instead of doing the first couple stages of this video. I mixed moot green with a little bit of arid earth and did the same thing basically, highlighting only the more raised areas this time. Orc skin has a lot of broad flat areas, like uh, like the side of his jaw. Some of the muscles are kind of flat too. For those areas or other areas where it's not obvious where the highlights should go and there's no guide, I usually paint a couple thin lines down the center. You can see it a little bit here on his right arm and here again on his cheek. On the back of the arm I did a little gradient, making the highlights start on the bottom of the arm and working its way up. You could do this from the top down too or starting directly in the center. It's a personal preference thing. I used Army Painter Leather Brown to do the same thing from the tunic, mixing a little bit of air earth again after. Like the flat areas of these muscles, there's not that much definition on the back of the tunic. Old Games Workshop models tend to have more flat surfaces than newer ones. So I just painted lines on the areas that were super flat. It gives the highlight a little bit of a cell shaded look. Put some Agrax earth shade in the recesses of the metal areas, and also any areas where different textures of the model intersect with the metal. Unless there's a bright silver highlight there already. Then most importantly, I painted the eyes. I painted the eyes of a dot of Mephiston red to start, followed by a tinier dot of Troll Slayer orange, and finally an even smaller dot of Flash Kits yellow in the center of that dot. There's no real secret to doing this, you just have to practice and use a very small brush. If I mess up, I'll usually just paint the whole eye a dark green and start again. If it's really raised, you could try wiping off the top layer of a paper towel too. Eyes can be hard to paint, but I feel like the end results are worth it. I mixed some MIG ammo and light rust wash together to create a, well, rusty effect on the blades. Ammo paints look real good, but smell real bad, and they're kind of hard to use. To destroy your brushes, I have brushes specifically designated as, like, enamel paint brushes that I use. I think they look a lot better than normal washes, but they're kind of a pain, and there's a learning curve. If you want to expand your hobby horizons, I'd look into them. If not, just use some watered-down brown or orange. That's basically it. There's some touch-ups that I ultimately did, but I didn't even notice those areas needed to be touched up until I shot this video. You got a little brown scorpion splatter on his face, but we cleaned that boy up, and he's good to go. Can't pay that much attention to detail when you're trying to paint a whole army like this. If you do, it'll take years, I don't recommend it. Your children will forget your name. Your son will find a new man he likes more than you, and he'll be his new dad. Because Warhammer is a hobby that has the capacity to take up infinite time and resources, mental, physical, and financial, at a certain point, I think you just gotta call models done. I usually set a timer or set a mental timer if I'm painting an army or huge blobs of infantry. This boy took me around an hour and a half. Unless it's for a kill team or something special, I usually won't go more than that. If you painted a whole squad at that speed, then that's 45 hours, a little more of a theoretical work week, a little less than most people's actual work weeks. It's a lot of goddamn time to spend painting an entire army. I think a realistic number to shoot for is between 45 minutes and an hour per orc. But if you really want and need to, you can do one in 5 to 10 minutes. I think the Zenith Highlight Contrast Paint approach I showed at the beginning of the video is the best approach. But I'll show you some works I painted in less than 5 minutes for a model later in the video.
I dry brushed the base with our good friend Arid Earth and added some Army Painter Tufts on top. I think these particular ones are called Mountain Tufts. Static Grass is great. It has a lot of character. It's pretty easy to apply. I would argue having a nice base is as important as the actual paint job itself. You gotta think of the context that we're painting these orcs. Most of the time it's gonna be top down in the tabletop's perspective. And when that far away, the base is gonna be one of the most noticeable aspects. It doesn't have to be fancy, just some texture, a dry brush, and some static grass on top is enough. Here's some gloom spike kits I painted with basically the same method. I mixed some flash kits yellow in for the highlights instead of Arid Earth. Painted their lips with bug mints glow in Arid Earth. And also, obviously, a lot more time was spent on their faces. The leaves are from a company called Secret Weapon Miniatures. Green Stuff World makes pretty similar leaves too. These guys are a lot faster for me to paint than boy is. They have less surface area. It took me around an hour each, maybe a little bit more for the characters. Painting a boy to a comparable level of quality would probably be between an hour and a half and two hours. I like to add a small amount of flesh tone to work someone to spend more time on. This knob has some pink mixed in to his lips and ears. Knobs are obviously one of the more noticeable models that'll stand out in your boy squads. I like spending more time on them, but at the same time, you also don't want them to stand out too much. Otherwise, they won't blend in with the unit very well. Scenic bases are a good way to make them stand out without making them feel too different from the rest of the models in the unit. For context, here's the kill team that this knob was made to be a part of. He has more layers of highlighting than most of them, and his base is a little fancier than basically all of them. But I try not to overpaint him so that he didn't feel stylistically divorced from the rest of the boys. Less is more. You want him to look fancier, but not outclass them. These boys averaged around two hours each, and I think the knob took around three. Here's an example of one of the first orcs I painted for my most recent orc army. He's base coated with ochre and camo, then given a glaze of way watcher green and all the crevices. As you can see, there's a lot of chipping all over his body. I used to only varnish metal models, but if you play with plastic models enough, they will chip, no matter how well they're primed. To see all my current orcs, I first cover them with a coat of semi-gloss varnish, and after that's dried for 24 hours, put a coat of matte varnish on after. To evaluate how much time you actually need to put into painting orcs, don't just look at them at the distance you're painting them from, assuming you're someone who primarily wants to paint them so that you can use them in games. Spend more time looking at them far away at tabletop level than close up. Things that are really important at a tabletop level are eyes and teeth. Small decals or free hands add a lot too. Lots of highlight layers is probably the thing that slows me down the most while painting. The work on the left has three layers of highlighting, the one on the right has one. All his accessories are also basically just a solid color. The one on the left took me around two hours, the one on the right took me around 45 minutes. You can save time on the skin and accessories by using dry brushing instead of edge highlights. Agrax Earthshade and other washes will also go a long way. This Stormboy took literally five minutes to paint. Base coated with black spray primer. Heavily dry brushed all of him with Iron Breaker. Then I sprayed an extremely thin coat of orange and brown mixed with a ton of water through my airbrush. Then I used a really flat square shaped dry brush to put a heavy coat of ochre and camo on his skin and face. Painted his teeth with air dirt. Painted only his left eye with Wild Rider Red. Base coated the base of a brown airbrush paint whose name I forget. Then dry brushed the base of air dirt. Painted the edge of the base black and then I was done. I came up with this color scheme out of desperation. I wanted to field 30 store boys in the tournament I was going to and only had three hours to paint them. I don't think they look as good as the other boys that painted in this video. But at the tabletop level, they honestly don't look too far off. I had these models unpainted for two years before I used them in the tournament. It'd still be unpainted to this day if I hadn't come up with this out of necessity. Tournaments or gaming events could be a great motivator. Here's a shot of the fast boy and the slow boy side by side. Close up, slow boy looks way better. But if I painted them all like fast boy, I would have two full years back of my life. And here they are as five man squads side by side. These are almost never going to be looked at as individual models. They're going to be looked at as squads. And when you're painting boys, it's more important to think about how they look as a unit and a coherent whole than an individual boy. Having a fully painted squad of a uniform color scheme is way better than having a half painted squad with one or two boys that are painted very well. This doesn't mean paint them poorly, it just means that you should focus on having them painted before you focus on having them all painted perfectly. And the further out we zoom, the less little differences matter. I've seen too many people play who are pretty good painters but tend to be perfectionists or really meticulous about their painting. We typically play with like 10 models that are painted really well and 80 that aren't painted at all. Don't feel guilty if you're brand new though. Painting an army is a lot of work. If I was to go back and add more to the boy on the right, I would start with the cloth. I like how it looks black, but adding a layer of black Templar contrast would make it look better. I think painting some small checkers would add a lot too. Checkers can seem kind of intimidating. If you don't want to freehand them, the transfers that come in the decal sheet that come in basically every orc box look pretty good and are very easy to apply. On the left are some models from the fanciest full squad of 30 boys I've ever painted. It took around three hours each. And on the right are some boys from our mid-tier quality squad who averaged around 45 minutes each. I had a lot of fun painting the boys on the left, but painting a whole army that way is an abyss few return from. Most of my boys are converted in some small way, and a lot of them are repurposed fantasy figures. Having variety in your boys will make the process less painful, as painting the same orc with top knot head for the 50th time can get a little tedious. Alpha 40k orc kits are incredibly modular, and they're also compatible with the old fantasy models if you can find those. Here's my custom shooter knob from the fancy squad. Space is from the GW hero basing kit. I don't know if they still make them, but it seems like they didn't sell that well and most stores still tend to have a couple. And he himself is converted using bits only from the classic 1999 I think knob squad.
squad and of course skulls here's one of my kill team commandos i tried to give him a bunch of different fancy bits to make him stand out doing little things like head swaps makes them a lot more interesting to paint here's a boy with a flash kit head i use green stuff to fill in the neck area big fan of pirate orcs i still gotta drill the gun barrel i know my bad if you get burnt out midway through try to paint a character or a vehicle every 10 boys it's nice to use them as little rewards along the way most importantly it keeps painting fun because what's the point of painting plastic toys if it's not fun i complain about painting a lot but i wouldn't do it if i didn't genuinely enjoy it i don't know why they're so hypnotic but i could probably literally paint orc infantry for the rest of my life and have a good time if you get tired of painting your color scheme halfway through don't be scared to mix it up i feel like it's important to have individual units look coherent but if the army as a whole has a little bit of color variation for the sake of you being able to actually finish it i think it's definitely worth it this is a member of my black metal corpse paint storm boy squad i started painting them this way because i was bored of the way i normally paint orc skin and wanted something new but it's so much fun doing it i kind of want to paint an entire new army this way now it's relatively fast you stick around 50 minutes per model the most time consuming part is definitely painting the corpse paint itself but it's also the most fun here's all the painted ones i have that could fit on this display stand they're not done yet but they'll get there they're done enough that i can play games with them while still having them all painted i think they look pretty good alongside the rest of my army they definitely stand out but i don't think that's a bad thing and here's all the members of the aforementioned fancy boy squad that i could put on the spinning thing i spent a lot of time blending the skin and experimenting with different color tone all the accessories and decals took a long time too but playing with the skin is probably the most time consuming part again painting a full army this way is a fool's errand but i am a fool if you're not a fool but you still want some fancy orcs in your army save this level of detail for your knob squads and characters and that's all the information about painting orc boys that i have to present today i hope you learned something about orcs i hope you learned something about yourself and i hope this motivates you to paint an orc boy of your own because let's face it as we move into ninth it looks like it's gonna be a vehicle's world and we know all the orc boys we can get thanks for watching this video if you liked it please subscribe as i'm gonna be making a lot more of them and wherever you are make work and work bless you upon this day